Oh, this app is so inconsistent. I don't even know why I use it sometimes. I know why I use it, because it looks like a VHS camcorder, right? By the way, Labor Day, happy Labor Day. Sad summer Sunday. Anyway, talked about all that yesterday. But this app, it's RetroVision, right? And I come out to spots like this to film the vlog because A, it's it makes me feel more comfortable. B, I won't have inter... Well, I can't guarantee no interruptions. But I won't have interruptions around the house. Because that always happens. You know, despite the fact that I tell everyone, um, I'm recording, can I have quiet? It seems like they intentionally have to make noise after I tell them that. And these aren't children. These are full-grown adults. It's like, come on. I told you I was recording. And, um... The reason why I bring that up is someone asked yesterday in the comments why I don't do live streams. I haven't done a live stream in four years. I'd love to go back to doing live streams. I just don't have the place to do it where I can do it uninterrupted. And it's embarrassing. You know, if I'm doing a live stream and, you know, I tell people I'm doing a live stream and they just don't give a shit. And they knock on the door. Oh, I need you to do this and that. Oh, you're not talking to anyone. I'm like, uh, I told you I was. It's, it's humiliating. And I don't have another place to do live streams. And if I were to do live streams here from the phone, which is technically possible, the bill would be ridiculous. Right? But anyway, moving on from that. I recently bought all the Indiana Jones films digitally off of uh, iTunes. I didn't have any of them. And they had the first... Three plus Kingdom of the Crystal Skull for 20 bucks, and then Dial of Destiny was 20 bucks. So I figured, what the hell? Let's get them. You know, 40 bucks? That's, you know, five movies for 40 bucks? That's less than $10 a movie. Right? So I got them, and I'm glad I did. And I rewatched Dial of Destiny. And I liked it a lot better the second time. And I think the reason why I liked it a lot better the second time was. All my expectations for what I wanted an Indiana Jones film to be, the film I visualized in my head, were gone, and I was seeing the movie for what it is, not what I wanted it to be. And I think all of us as film fans and that have that problem every once in a while. We, we get hyped up and we have our expectations, even on a subconscious level, of what we want a movie to be, And when we see it the first time and it doesn't live up to those, whether they're conscious or subconscious expectations, we feel disappointed. But sometimes when you rewatch the film knowing, okay, I'm not getting the movie necessarily I myself wanted, and just viewing the movie for what it is, sometimes the second viewing, you get some pretty good enjoyment out of it. And I... I still don't think Dial of Destiny was the best send-off you could have gotten. But I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more. Right? And here's the thing. The second viewing, when I saw the character Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridget, or Phoebe w Bridget Waller, I always get her names backwards for some reason. I saw the character for as she was written, not this fear monger, she's replacing Indiana Jones, online hyperboil bullshit that propagated long before we even saw a trailer for the movie, right? Now, here are my thoughts on the character, having seen the character as written, as performed in the movie. Helena Shaw is an asshole, pure and simple. She is most definitely a reflection of Indiana Jones. She's his goddaughter. He cared about her to a point, you know. She definitely was inspired and influenced by him. Except she 
went about it in a different way. She's she's a mirror to Indiana Jones, and not all, necessarily all his positive traits. She is a thief. She's an asshole. She's a manipulator. Indiana Jones is none of these things. But, but, you could see why she ultimately at the end does care. I don't want to spoil the end of the movie, which, by the way, is so much more poignant. Uh, the second viewing, it's like, oh, wow, this really hits. Once you get over the shock and you just, like, in the emotion of the characters, you're like, oh, you really feel for Indy. Like, ten times more on the second viewing, I feel. Right? Ultimately, all that's a front that she doesn't give a shit about Indy, despite the fact she's definitely influenced by Indy. Right? And yes, there are some not-so-subtle, on-the-nose indications that she is a mirror of Indy. I mean, she has her own short round with Teddy. Indy had short round. She has Teddy. You know. But I never felt that she was outright going to replace Indiana Jones. I, I never bought that rumor I heard that she... And Indy went back in time, and she caused some paradox, and she became Indiana Jones. I was like, who the fuck thought of that shit? Right? As a character, she's not the most likable character. She is an asshole. But I never felt her as a replacement for Indiana Jones. I never, I never understood that fear. Is she annoying at times? Yes, most definitely. But compared to Willie Scott in Temple of Doom, talk about fucking annoying. Willie Scott, and no disrespect to Kate Capture, Steven Spielberg's wife, Willie Scott was basically a diva eye candy. Right? There were some great comedy bits with her in Temple of Doom, right? But she was there mostly because she was eye candy. And boy, was she annoying. Oh my God. All, go watch Temple of Doom again. Willie Scott. The characters are visibly annoyed. Both Short Round and Indy are visibly annoyed and they're like, oh, we got to tag along with her. And oh, fine. Right? But it was done for laughs too. Right? So, this, so comparing Helen Shaw to Willie Scott which was, I don't want to say a love interest for Indy, but definitely a lust interest. And it would have been inappropriate for Helen Scott, uh, excuse me, uh, Helena Shaw. Helen Scott, yeah, that's the daughter of both Helen Shaw and uh, Lily, uh, oh, Willie Scott, yeah. If they somehow cloned the two of them and made a daughter, yeah. Anyway, Harrison Ford's 80 years old. There's no fucking way in God's green earth that in this day and age they were going to give him a young love interest. And I, I would have felt that. I'd be like, yeah, that's not cool, man. He's 80. We've already established he got married in the last film to, you know, to um, Marion Ravenwood. Right? But Helen Shaw was nowhere near annoying as Willie Scott was. So why was there all this big agenda hatred of this character before the movie even came out? And I had a discussion with a good friend on the, on, uh, the Facebook page. I don't want to say who. Right? Because I don't always know if it's cool to bring, up, bring other people into this. Right? I think... There are people just who are threatened by women in film. Like, there is a segment of the population, incels or whatever, who, if a woman's on screen and she's more than just eye candy, it threatens them for some reason. And I, I do not understand why. 
I do not understand why that bothers some people. Because women, I hate to break it to you, I don't know if you noticed, but women are half the fucking population. Right? And they have stories and emotions to, you know, emotions and stories to tell. I'm getting my words backwards here. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with a film having a strong female lead that's a fully developed character and more than just, hey, look at the tits on her. I never got that. When I see a movie, I want interesting characters. Now, again, it depends on the tone of the movie. right? If you're watching some 80s uh, uh, college campus sex romp and all that, and it's done in you know, good humor, well, not good humor, I should say, but you know, in, in, in that aspect, you don't really particularly need well-developed, deval- fully written backstory characters. Right? Depends on the tone of the movie, too, you know. But there is a segment of the population, the movie-going population, that's threatened by this shit. There were people who were mad at the Barbie movie, that it even existed. I recall hearing articles and all that, oh, the Barbie movie hates men and all this shit. Why does this movie exist, though? The whole reason for the Barbie movie, too, and I haven't seen the Barbie movie, so I can't really comment one way or the other. Right? But I recall hearing this fear of the fucking Barbie boy. I'm like, why does this bother you? Right? And I know I sound somewhat hypocritical. I'm aware of that. I'm going to go into that. Right? Haven't seen the Barbie movie. But my whole philosophy with the Barbie movie is I'm not going to go out and rush to see the Barbie movie, even though it's like one of the highest grossing films of this year. Right? I might watch it if it's available on one of the streaming platforms. And if I do, I'll give my review, but I'm not excited to see it. It's I'm not the target audience. I'm not a I'm not a woman. Sorry. <laughs> and I am I'm not a little girl. Right? But I, I, like it didn't threaten me in any way. I was like, well, there's a Barbie movie. Okay, that's a brand. That has brand recognition. You know, they've sold millions, if not billions, of fucking Barbie dolls. I'm shocked there wasn't a Barbie movie sooner. Right? Okay. Fine. Going back to... You knew it was coming. The Ghostbusters reboot. Even... Go back and watch my videos. Even when it was announced it was an all-female reboot, that was not the problem I had with the film. It was a reboot. And when you saw the film, the film is very hypocritical. So, okay, so bear with me now. We have a movie where one of our lead characters is fired, is... Uh, sexually harassed by the dean of her college. It's it basically fired. It's been a while since I've seen the film, and no, I don't want to go back and rewatch the film, right? So, that character, I think, Abby or something, I forget. I forget the fucking character's names. She's fired because the dean of the film wants her to dress more ladylike or sexy, more pleasing to his eye. She's fired. She teams up with the other women. They start the Ghostbusters. Right? Later on in the film, she hires someone who is very likely mentally handicapped. Who possibly gave the worst interview. People running by. I always get... Yeah. Who possibly gave the worst interview in human history was asked to design a logo and couldn't do it. The only reason he himself, meaning uh, the character Kevin played by Chris Hemsworth, the only reason why he was hired is because of his looks. This man is incompetent. This man should be receiving some sort of aid. Yet the woman who was fired because she refused to give in sexual harassment, goes and pretty much does the same thing to the secretary of the group. 
and the movie passes that off as comedy. So when a female is being sexually harassed, which is never a good thing, right? It's never justified, right? That, oh, you should feel bad for her and all that. But when said female does the same thing to a male employee of hers, that's played for laughs. That's called bad writing. That's called hypocrisy. Right? And here's the other thing. Allegedly, again, I haven't seen the extended edition. And the reason why I haven't seen the extended edition, because watching the extended edition would be like, hey, Al, you want to have open heart surgery without anesthetic? No, I'm good. Right? Okay. Hey, Al, do you want to have the same open heart surgery without anesthetic, but for longer? Hell no. That's what I view the extended edition of Ghostbusters, right? The reboot, I should say. So, let me get this straight. So, you have a movie where all the men are pretty much assholes. The mayor's an idiot. The secretary's an idiot. The, um... What was I about to say? The dean of the college is an asshole. One of the main characters is a fucking hypocrite. Right? So, we have this poorly written, poorly improv movie. With all female leads, fine. Doesn't bother me. But the fact that all four of them had to, you couldn't have one male colleague or two males, two females. Anyway, right? You couldn't have done that. Right? Because it was clearly gender swapping. Right? But then it's revealed that one of the characters, Holtzman, is a lesbian. But we left that out of the theatrical cut actual character development there actually man, something interesting like, oh that kind of makes sense about her that's, that's an interesting character trait we can't have that though that's, that's one step too far the fuck are you doing that film I felt given the right level of context deserved what it got Indiana Jones didn't Indiana Jones was just you know one of these things where it was like okay I, 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 these people out there what is about women that bothers you so much especially on a film Right? And here's another thing. On film, I notice this on film. It depends on the movie you watch. Right? But go back to the heydays of, of movies. James Bond and Captain Kirk, for example. Perfect examples. Male, white male heroes. Right? Who are definitely promiscuous. James Bond, if she looked remotely attractive... He was going to get her by the end of the fucking movie. And James Bond had the dick of death. Let's be real here. Almost every single woman James Bond has slept with throughout the entire franchise, all the movies, has died. Almost. Not all of them. Right? I think the one woman James Bond never really... Well, the two women James Bond never slept with were Money Penny and M. Right? But if you were a woman in a James Bond film and he slept with you, that was your ass. Meaning you were going to die. <laughs> James Bond had the dick of death. Now, I'm sure there are examples. I mean, for fuck's sakes, there's like 25 of these fucking movies. I can't remember everyone, right? And James Bond clearly was going to sleep with you to get information or just because he could. Right? But that's okay. We look up to James Bond for that. Captain Kirk's even worse. Captain Kirk, you didn't have to be human. You just had to be good looking. Captain Kirk fucked green bitches. You know what I'm saying? Captain Kirk was like, ooh, she's hot. And Bones would be like, Jim, 
She's not even human. Don't worry, Bones. Get get that Super VD vaccine ready. <laughs> Captain Kirk didn't give a fuck. And we that's part of his character. Fine, okay. It's fiction. It's a story, right? But if we had a female character doing that, she'd be called the biggest skank, the biggest slut, the biggest thought, the biggest hoe, you name it. Right? By both men and women. Right? So if you have a female character who sleeps around because she enjoys it, that's her thing, it's viewed upon negatively. But if you have a classic a classic male character, today you, I don't really think you can get away with it too much. I think to an extent you could. It's still admirable somewhat. I was watching, uh, it's this YouTube channel, Popcorn in Bed. It's a great channel. It's a great, you know, the, the, uh, Carly and Kaylee, I forget their names. Uh, they watched these movies for the first time. And they did a thing on the James Bond, right, uh, films. They didn't do every one, but they did a bunch. It's two young women watching the films, right? And I love reaction channels because you get to see the movies through other people's eyes. And I think that's a wonderful thing. All right. So they're watching the classic James Bond films. And James Bond's doing some sex is shit. He's like man talk or he's slapping women or you know I'm talking to Sean Connery Bond like and there are scenes where he's clearly after the Bond girl of the film and even then like oh that's just James. James does that and, and they don't have a problem with this and these are modern young women who are watching the film through 21st century eyes, and even they're going, oh, that's just how it was back then. That's just James. That's just part of the character. That's part, right? And I'm like, if they don't have a fucking problem with this, why do other people do? Right? It's a product of its era. Right? But I remember with the last James Bond film, I forget the character's name. Forgive me. But we had a black woman take the mantle of 007 in the film because James Bond had vanished and retired. I forget the details, right? And that caused a huge fucking uproar. Oh, my God, they're replacing James Bond with a woman. The outrage. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're, they're assigning the number to another character. Who happens to be a black woman? What's what's the problem with that? I I don't. It's it's a number. They're not changing James Bond's gender. It's not like Blowfield has James Bond on the laser. Was it Blowfield? No, that was that was Goldmember, right? It's not like Goldmember, Goldfinger, Goldmember's the Mike Myers one. Okay, there we go. It's not like Goldfinger had James Bond on the laser table and forcibly changed his sex. Right? That didn't happen. In fact, that would be kind of interesting. <laughs> At the, after 25 James Bond films, if that actually happened, like, let's go with this. Let's see what happens. How does that change the character? The character's never encountered this. And here's another thing about James Bond. Even the women he did sleep with that didn't die, which I'm sure there were, Right? How does James Bond not have a small country full of fucking children at this point? Think about it. Right? Where's the fucking James Bond film where he finds out the villain is actually one of his illegitimate children? I have yet to see that James Bond film. Why hasn't that happened yet? Not for nothing with the James Bond films, the way James Bond slept around. I think Q Branch was really a scientific lab to develop treatment for all the VT James Bond would have gotten. Like, if you watch these James Bond films, and they're great films, they're great for their era and everything, it's part of the charm. If you watch these fucking films, you go, Jesus, James. James, she's a cocktail waitress. You're not going to get any information from her. She knows that she's just serving cocktails, for Christ. It's like, yes. She's going to serve my cocktail soon. And he's going to smack her, and then she's going to fucking die 20 minutes later. 
Like, oh God, James. Oh, man. I mean, you have to laugh at some of this shit. I'm saying this in humor, but I mean, you got to think about some of this shit. You go, mm. but if you had a female James Bond who did this shit, she'd be hated. I find that hypocritical too. So it's okay for a male character to do that shit, but for a female character, oh, it's slutty. It's it's unladylike. It's this. It's that. And I'm like, oh, jeez, you can't have it both ways. The most sexist character I've ever seen. The most... I don't even... Sexist is the wrong word, because... Sexist implies misogynistic, hating women. But the most... Sexual harassment character. Dan Fielding. Right? I am shocked the woke crowd hasn't discovered this character yet. Well, it's only a matter of time. Right? Someone's running by... I am shocked the woke, you know, the same people who tried to cancel Judy Garland because she was she was forced to do blackface at 15, right? I am shocked they haven't found out about Dan Field, the character of Dan Fielding. Their fucking heads would explode. But here's the thing about Dan Fielding. If you actually watch Night Court, most of the women, the women Dan Fielding's hitting on and all that like it. Oh, we can't show that today. We can't show that today. Most of them are playing hard to get. They're playing a game, right? But if you had a female version of Dan Fielding, you'd piss off everybody. It's a fucking no one situation, right? And what about the classic episode... Of Night Court. This is if you haven't seen, if you're woke and you haven't seen this, maybe you should watch this episode. I forget the exact one, uh, what it's called or what season it's in. There's an episode with Terry Hatcher who played Lois Lane in Lois and Clark: The New Adventures of Superman. Right? This was before that. Dan Fielding's a known womanizing character, and his boss is a little person that they play for laughs, but it's still an interesting character, right? And the boss knows how Dan is. And the boss, for comedic effect, just to torture uh, Dan Fielding, uh, tells Dan, who's a very much a womanizer, to look after his niece, who's Terry Hatcher in her 20s, who is hyper-teasing Dan Fielding. And it gets to the point where it's like, oh, wow, like, really? Like, it's no longer teasing. It's, yeah, she wants him, right? And the comedy with him trying to resist is fucking hysterical. You did an episode like that today, it'd be fucking hated by the woke crowd. It'd be, well, you can't have that. You can't do this. She's a slut and he's blah, blah, blah. It'd be, it, it, it'd melt their fucking heads. Indiana Jones style it would, right? There's another episode. <laughs> with Dan feeling he has to abstain from womanizing, sleeping with multiple partners. That's his character, right? That's the 80s, that's the character. Where he has to abstain and he goes to a, a sperm a sperm lab and he has to get a test redone. I forget the details. And he has to abstain. And he's, he's fucking super stressed out, right? <laughs> and everyone around him knows it. And Roz, the, the, oh, yeah, who she's the bailiff, like one of the balance, goes, sees how pent up he is. He goes, run for it, ladies, right? It's done with humor, right? And all the women run, right? Then Harry, the judge, goes, fellas, let's not take any chances. And they go over running, right? And then the, the, the elderly woman from the sperm lab shows up at the uh, cafeteria. And says, oh, there was a mistake, you know, your sperm's fine, blah, 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 right? And he's like, you made me abstain for two weeks? And it's the librarian from Ghostbusters, right? <laughs> Dan's got a friggin' knife to his wrist. He's ready to fucking end it, right? You gotta see this scene. The, 
librarian from Ghostbusters, this sweet little old lady, goes, I'll be waiting in the car. And Dan looks at it, the knife on his wrist, he looks at her, knife on the wrist, and goes, eh, and goes after the, the, the woman who played the library. And that was done for laughs. Today, your fucking heads would explode. So, I, I just don't get why we're at this state with pop culture where, like, it, it seems to be hypocritical now. Is it just me? Is this just, like, something I'm seeing? Anyway, half an hour vlog, I apologize. But it was just on my mind. Thank you so much for watching. I could talk about this all day, but I figure half an hour is enough. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.